Okay, so all you need to do <laughs> is you need to tell us what you're doing and okay. how to do it. Today we're making bread. Yeah, today we are making unleavened bread specifically, and we're specifically making unleavened bread that my friend Jaya in Chicago taught me to make, or tried to teach me to make. Um, this is similar to roti, if you want a proper recipe from the internet somewhere, but she taught me to make this, and this is our version that our family likes and that we're going to use for communion tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's what this is. Um, if you had durum wheat flour at home, you should use that instead because it is better. I have all-purpose flour here and available. So I'm going to take about a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. This is much less specific than most of my recipes are. That's because I just learned it from somebody in person. Um, so we're going to use a cup and a half of that. This is a half cup measure, that's why it looks like that. And then... Just an, well, and then a half teaspoon of salt. We already have it out. And just enough water to get it to form into a ball. So I'm just going to mix the salt in there a little bit. So this is, um, I measured out about half a cup of water, but we won't use all of that most likely. So we'll add about a quarter cup to start with. And stir it up and see what it does. It kind of depends on how much humidity is in the house and things like that, but that's not enough. Just enough to where it stirs to a bit of a ball. And it's still not enough. So we did use just about half a cup of water today. I might have to go get a little more. Get a little more, sorry. <laughs> I used. So a little more here. I probably do usually use about um, half as much water as I do flour. <laughs> and there's the buzzer for our banana bread, too. <laughs> Turn that off. Got multiple things going on here this morning. And that's actually all of the stirring. And then we're going to knead it. I'm going to put a little flour down on the counter and knead it for 10 minutes. That's the long, boring part of this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down on the counter. Oops, and I lost my nice. We'll use this. A little bit of flour down on the counter. And we'll need that spoon for later. And we're just going to dump this out. And like I said before, this you need it for a while, so it's going to take about 10 minutes of just pushing it and pulling back towards you. I think my home ec teacher said make a three point turn with it. <laughs> Fold it, roll it. Sometimes I cheat and don't do it for quite so long, but Jaya's note said to always do it for at least 10 minutes. We'll let that sit and we can clean up while we do it. While we do it. All right, so we kneaded this for 10 minutes and then I let it sit for another about five minutes just to give it time to rest because they tell me to do that. Um, I'm just going to pick it up and put down some more flour. And then we're going to cut it into a few pieces. This looks like maybe four or five today. Um, and then we'll roll it out. And the rolling process is what Jay and I took the longest time on. I'm going to cut this, actually maybe just three pieces. Um, let's see. Way less than a baseball, but a little more than a golf ball. I don't know. What size is that? probably weigh it or something if I was being very professional. <laughs> I usually make a little bit more than this. So we're going to have four of them, but they're going to be different sizes. You can use just a butter knife on this. I use a bench scraper all the time, but just a butter knife would work. And roll them into tiny little balls, and those will just continue to sit and rest. Then we need, like I said, just a little bit of flour out here. Got a little too much there. Kind of mash it down is probably a proper term, but kind of shape that a little bit and then just roll it into a rough square. I think the reason that it pulls back is that I probably didn't let it rest enough, but we're going to just roll with that. I am not very precise in this particular um, 
recipe. I'm very precise in most of them. Um, but we're just going to do this. All right. Here's the trickiest part. Can we get those out of this way here? And this, in this bowl, I have a little bit of canola oil. Um, take just a little bit, less than a tablespoon for sure, just a little bit of oil and put it right in the middle of your dough. And we're going to fold it over, just once over the top, and then let those meet at the sides. This is the reason why I'm wearing an apron, because it does squirt out the ends. Fold it over again, about a third of the way, and over. And we're going to roll it again. Roll it back out to where it's about the same size as before. This takes a little bit more effort for me. And I'll slide those out of the way again. And this is just distributing the oil throughout the dough so that it gets bubbly and browns nicely. It's it's the fun part of, of how the stove tastes at the end. Because it's all just very simple ingredients. All right, so we're gonna stop there. So I'm just letting the pan heat up. It's, um, I'm using a, a non-stick pan over medium heat. Um, I think if you have a cast iron pan, over some good medium heat, that is probably ideal, but I can never quite control the heat over my pan. <laughs> so we're just going to let this cook until it is um, showing some bubbles on top. Um, it's actually already starting to do this. Um, you can kind of see that it's just a little bubbly and springing back. It's not all completely flat like it was before. Um, Hopefully the, the camera can pick that up a little bit. So we're going to let it cook until it's bubbly on top and then we'll start peeking underneath it to see if it's getting brown. It's got more brown spots, but I want a little bit more even though it's got good bubbles. That's what we're looking for in there. And that's what's um, the oil underneath there just expanding and, and forming, letting those air pockets form. Sometimes just one bubble forms, and sometimes you get lots of these bubbles to form. <laughs> and we're just going to let that surprise us, like little happy accidents. <laughs> little Bob Ross style. We're just going to be chill in the kitchen here. I'm not chill enough, though. I'm going to go ahead and flip it, and it looks about like that. And then on this side, it just, it'll need a little less time, maybe just a minute or so more, but until the other side looks just about like this. My little imperfect breads. It's okay. You can make yours into nice squares and then send them to me so I so that they I know that somebody can do it well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. You could let it go longer. Anywhere between here and burnt, it'll be yummy. Take that out and turn that out for now. So this is like I feel like Chip and Joanna. A little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow we're gonna share communion together as a family. And we're going to use this uh, recipe for making some flatbread, some unleavened bread. And we'd encourage you to try it along with us. We've got some juicy juice, grape <laughs> juice in the fridge that I think we'll be using. And, um, but have uh, the most important part for tomorrow is that you guys celebrate Jesus' death and his resurrection with us and with your family. Or whoever else might be in your house at the time. And let's just remember him. Let's celebrate that together. We'll talk more about it tomorrow.